Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today's lesson will be on playing single strokes in an orchestral setting. For this, I'm using Etude No. 2 from the Mitchell Peters book, Advanced Snare Drum Studies. That's the blue book. First, you heard me play it at the written tempo of half note equals 92. I was subdividing, so then we had quarter note equals 184. Then you heard me play it really fast, where the half note equals 108, and then I subdivided the metronome on quarter notes to be quarter note equals 216. So playing singles, single strokes in an orchestra setting can be one of the most difficult things to do. There's lots of things that can go wrong. Number one, if you get a little nervous, you could end up playing things unevenly. The other thing is the conductor will be unreliable in their tempos normally from rehearsals to performance. So you have to be prepared for anything. So it could be slower, it's usually faster, and uh, your, your whole concept of playing, your whole plan needs to fit in with that. The main thing you have to remember to control your nerves is to keep your grip under control. So for these kinds of singles in this kind of setting, I'm not doing hardly any bouncing at all. I'm using mostly wrists. So the grip is the fingers are all together, these three, and my first finger under the stick at all times. I'm not doing much of this motion. There is a space here, and I'm using mostly wrists. So you see those wrists moving. Now, if you play matched, obviously that left hand will, will match your right. If you play traditional, like I do, that grip will be the same thing. All your fingers will remain on the stick, except when you have loud accents, and then you can get off of the stick. If you want to let that stick move freely. Okay, so you'll see that in, in those performances. One thing about this A2 that's tricky and about playing single strokes in an orchestra setting is the dynamic control. Now, one thing you gotta remember, if you are a little nervous, you have to play off of the drum. So if you're nervous and your hand's shaking, it ends up sounding like this. Like that, okay? And maybe some of you have heard your students do that when they get nervous in performances. So what I tell my students to do is to lift up. So practice playing off of the drum. So this etude starts out really quietly and you want to uh, start on the edge of the drum. So that first section uh, is pretty quick if you're playing at the written tempo. Here's the written tempo. One, two, three, four. Now there you saw me alternating on the second line doing. That's fine, but one thing that I do, and you saw me do it when you, I played the first solo, is I do consi consistently lead with my right hand like this. So I'm basically playing eighth notes like this. And then I'm filling in, okay, with my left hand. So that's another concept you can explore. So if you want to alternate, that's fine. Or if you want to play it with one hand, that's fine as well, as long as it sounds even. Now let's take a minute and talk about the double stroke concept. And I'll move my metronome up to the tempo I was doing it at which is 216. So when you do this, uh, it's obviously going to be too fast to play singles. And it's okay as long as it's even. So if you're a good rudimental drummer, this gives you a, uh, an advantage because already your, your doubles are pretty clean. So one thing you should practice is your doubles at all dynamics, playing them evenly.
Now, if you use a calf head like I do, that's tricky. So it kind of sucks you in. So you really have to practice on that head a lot because it's much looser than a regular head, than a plastic head. Uh, we have some rain here today in North Carolina. So uh, it's, it's, I'm having to keep bringing it up. And that's one thing you have to do with the calf head. So you see there on my doubles, I am using quite a bit of bounce, which is what you want to do. And that bounce looks like that traditional. I'll move this way. Okay, and the right hand's bouncing as well. So unlike the first way, the singles, we're using a lot of wrists. Here I'm using wrist and fingers. Now, one thing that happens when you play doubles is you're bound to accent certain notes, especially if you're used to playing a lot of rudimental etudes. I myself have to fight this. So if you look at line two, the second stanza, you have uh, this tricky little passage. It's worth practicing this a lot. One, two, three, four. So there I accented each eighth note slightly. Now let's do it without that. One, two, one, two, three, four. So, you know, that's one thing that's going to happen if you do it doubles. You're going to have a tendency to accent more than if you do it singles. So that wraps up that, um, that little lesson. And again, I'm going to be recording pretty much every etude in this book. They each kind of deal with a different kind of problem, be it metric, dynamic, or technical. So we'll see you soon. Thanks.